And hello again everyone and welcome back to The Longest Journey. Now if you remember last time, April Ryan had run all over New Venice looking for the um, information on the Vanguard, found out that they were now called the Church of the Voltec, found out that the guy who was apparently supposed to be the next Guardian is now named Gordon Holloway and has been brainwashed by the Vanguard. And the improbably named Burns Flipper is going to get her an ID so she can get into the Church of Old headquarters. She passed all this information over to Cortez and agreed to meet him tomorrow. She goes back to her room at the border house where she finds Zack listening outside of her door and Charlie and Emma inside. And she tells them that she's been chosen to save the world and they believe her. She tells them about her and Cortez, and asks them to keep an eye out of whoever may be after them. Now, she also doesn't give them a whole lot of additional information beyond that, because that would have been way too useful. She agrees to meet with them again tomorrow at the cafe and explain everything, but for the time being, she needs to get some sleep. Well, we're going to assume that that's not going to work out well for anyone involved, so we're going to catch up with April again and see what more trouble she gets into. As we continue... The longest journey. What's that noise? Well, April, I'm actually more concerned with the pink light shining in from your window. I assume the light coming out of your wardrobe is just a portal to Narnia, because where else do they put those things? And I gotta ask, does April sleep in her shoes? Because it sure looks like she's wearing boots of some kind. I guess those might be supposed to be Where's socks. Where's that light coming from? But yeah, it really looks like you're wearing shoes, April. Oh! Well, I guess it's not a portal to Narnia after all. Oh, not again! This is a dream I really do because if Cortez didn't open a shift, who did? And how will I get home again on my own? No dream, and I'm guessing this is Mercuria. It smells like it, like a mix between fresh flowers and cow dung. There's some kind of part going on in there. All right. Uh, one thing I need to tell you about this episode is that this is a very exposition heavy episode. There's a lot of really long conversation trees and rather than make you sit there and watch me click for 15 minutes on conversation trees, I'm just gonna click through them and summarize where I can. The other problem is that there's a lot of scripted sequences where I can't break out. We're just going to sit there and watch those because it kind of disrupts the flow if I do it otherwise. So, just warning you the way things are going to be. Anyway, we're inside the Journeyman Inn here. There's some people dancing in back. And a cute couple It's their here. first date, I can tell. They're a cute couple. I wonder if romance is different here or if the rituals are the same as back home. I mean, magic must play some part in it. Well, some people would say romance is always magic able, but... We'll skip that. Let's go talk to this woman. She looks like she works here. Maybe get some information. Excuse me. Hello? Hi, hello. Do you work here? Do I work here? Child, I'm the owner. I own and operate the Journeyman Inn. Oh, I didn't know. Of course you did not, child, but... Be careful. Others may not be as quick to forgive as I am when you address them disrespectfully. Okay. Asking if you work there is disrespectful. And you even admit she didn't know, but that's still disrespectful. And if you're the owner, don't you work there by definition? Okay, fine. Um, we're going to skip that for now. 
Um, this is where I'm going to skip forward for a bit. I'm going to go to the last stage of this conversation and just uh, summarize it for you when I get there. So I'll see you in a few seconds. All right, back again. Um, basically, what we just found out is that the innkeeper here, uh, she, first of all, she tells us that we are celebrating the Feast of the Balance. Now, this is the festival of exploring the balance of everything, not just the balance between science and magic. And they give thanks to the balance and the sentinels and the guardian who keeps them all safe. Now normally the Feast of the Balance would be this long three-day festival that took place all over Arcadia. Uh, but this year it's only going to be one night and they're only having it indoors because the Vanguard are out and the Vanguard are opposed to celebrating the balance. In fact, the Vanguard are trying to destroy people's faith in the balance because they say it's holding us back. That if everyone would just return to the way it was before the balance, then we could have the powers of the ancients again. But the innkeeper thinks it'll just bring pain and suffering. Uh, we also found out that the innkeeper bought the journeyman in after, through money earned in an honest trade in tobacco, wine, and slaves. And the fact that she considers slaves to be honest trade, well, I guess that's why she gets thinks she's being disrespected when you ask if she works there. Uh, she's from the Southlands, and before she became was a trader and an innkeeper, she was a seer. And as a seer, she is able to determine that April is very strong in the balance and very strong in fate. Uh, she tells April that this means that, well, most people are just carried along by fate. She describes it as being like in a wagon that's being drawn by a horse. But people like April can actually steer the horse. They can direct their actions and not just follow along with what fate gives them. And we're going to continue with what she has to say here. Tell me more about my future. It is strange. I see many paths, but they are all dark. I cannot tell much except that you are strong in fate, and strong in the balance. And you are strong in magic, too. Magic? That can't be right. I'm not... I don't know anything about magic. You do not have to know about magic to be strong in magic. If you ever learn how to harvest your talents, you will be a strong artisan. Artisan? Where have you been schooled, child? Have you forgotten your lore? My lore? Yeah, well, I haven't really had much use for my... lore lately. The artisan is the most powerful of magic users. She is able to shape magic and to use it by force of will alone. An artist can use magic shaped by others, molded into new magic, new art. A magician, or sorcerer, witch, warlock, can read and write incantations, drawing spells from the power of words. And the alchemist can create magic potions. He is the least of the four. Anyone with proper education can be an alchemist. The other three require some form of talent for magic. Thank you. I am at your service any time, child. I am afraid I must go take care of my guests now. Enjoy yourself. Yes, I'm sure that little lecture on magic will become important at some point. Um, I'm also kind of amused that this great seer here had no clue that April was actually from Stark and not from Lacadia. Who knows? There are two large rooms in the back, and they're both crammed with people. And we're about to have another one of those um, unskippable conversations come up, so we'll get to that in a second. But right now, we just have to wait for it to happen, and here it comes. Thank you, April Ryan. W what? There is no time here, but there soon will be time for you and I. Time enough, to be sure. You are speaking to me, April Ryan. We have spoken. I don't understand what you're... And how do you know my name? Who are you? Have we not met yet, 
I was sorry then for confusing you. I will be Abnaxus of the Venar, ambassador to the Irede Council in Mercuria for a time. I think I would have remembered you if we'd met. Who told you my name? You did. You are saying your name to me, April Ryan. In this moment, you tell me your name. You question why I know your name, and you speak to me the blessings of the balance for my long journey home. Sorry, I really don't know what you're talking about. It is difficult for us too, April Ryan, to understand you. We, the Venar, are not perceiving time like your people. In this moment, we are everywhere. In this moment, we are nowhere. But there is a veil. Beyond this veil, we are not seeing, but you have. You will be seeing. You are seeing. What veil? The veil created in chaos, by chaos, with chaos. It is a dark presence in our future, yes, future. A dark veil which hides the things that have been and will be. What's all this got to do with me? It was late. You were tired. We have talked in the morning when you come to visit me. Now you understand everything. Thank you, April Ryan. The blessings of the balance to you too. Did you just invite me to your home? I will. I did. I invite you to my home, April Ryan. My home was in the Mercuria City Green, and you will find it in the morning, before chaos came. I am explaining everything, and you understood. It seems I've already accepted your invitation, so I guess I don't have a choice. That is what you said. Good night. You will sleep well. And I hope you understand why I did not try to recap that conversation. The verb tenses would never work. Um, about this point, April's going to decide that she's tired. And we're not going to be able to do anything except go to sleep. So as soon as April tells us about being tired, we're going to go on to the I next really stage. I really am getting tired. I should find somewhere comfortable to sit down, rest my legs for a few minutes. Yeah, see? Let's go on to the next step. Good night, April. And, oh look, it looks like Cortez is having some problems. Obviously, we're back to Star. Yeah. Well, I guess April had a good night's sleep, sitting up. Wake up, child. Sorry, I guess I fell asleep. What time is it? It is morning. We need to clean before we open for breakfast, so I had to wake you. I slept right through the party? It seems so. You did not stir even when everyone was leaving. Oh well, I feel pretty good considering. You look a little pale, but it's nothing a good porridge won't fix. Well, they've commented before that shifting takes stuff out of you, so apparently April just had trouble. Of course, things are not quite that simple. Do you intend to walk about in that outfit, child? If it is day, it would not be proper. It's all I have. Come. We will find something more suited to a young lady about the city. 
So yeah, we're gonna get around the Aples walking around in her underwear problem. How do I look? Well, it'll have to do for now. You do not have the most womanly of forms, but I'm certain you will fill out in time with the right diet. Thanks. Thank you for the clothes, for everything. You will have time aplenty to thank me while you are cleaning plates and cutlery, child. I'm sorry. Work? Those clothes do not come free, child, nor does a night spent sleeping before the fire. I'm not asking much, only for a helping hand in cleaning. Yeah, it seems that no matter what world April's in, she's working in a restaurant. All right. Tell me where to start. You can start carrying in the mugs from the back room. Which, to be fair, is an interesting diversion from the usual adventure game thing where you just get you things. You did good work for me today, child. More than was required. Here you are. Some coin to help you out. And keep the clothes. You seem to have grown into them already. And is it just me, or do those clothes look exactly like the clothes she wears back in Stark, except the texture applied to the top and bottom have reversed? But anyway. Man, this is a lot busier than it was this morning, and what is that thing? Okay. Well, we got a couple of places we can go. We need to go talk to that weird ambassador, the guy who was having verb tense problems. And we probably should go talk to the people we know here in town. So, we're going to go talk to the ambassador first. He's up here at the city green, if you remember. Now... I'm going to do one side thing first. If you remember back in the hallway in the border house in Stark, there was the plastic plant, you know, the organic plastic, and I told you to make sure you get a leaf. There is a garden or a flower bed right here. If we take that organic plastic leaf, and I closed it by mistake, I always do that. There we go. We can plant it here in this garden, weirdly. Not very good at this, but hey, I was born on a farm. That's got to count for something. Oh, you're a Lamarckian, huh? Okay. Now, grow. I guess that works in a magic world. Whoa, I must be a natural born gardener. Strangest thing, I thought I heard a voice say something about a book of secrets. That the book of secrets is now open. Something like that. Huh. All right, what that actually means is on the main menu screen, there's a thing called the book of secrets, which gives some, you know, background sketches or sketch art and outtakes and that sort of thing. You get to hear April Ryan's voice actress flub her lines a lot of times and that sort of thing. Uh, normally the Book of Secrets will become open after you finish the game, but if you plant that there, you get the Book of Secrets open immediately. That's all there is to it, but it's just kind of a weird thing. Anyway, let's Head on inside and talk to the ambassador. Enter, honored guest, and I would have been with you presently. All right, this is going to be another long involved conversation tree, so I'm going to probably skip through some of this conversation once this guy finishes getting downstairs. Yes, they're making us wait while he walks all the way down.
Be welcome, stranger, to my abode. Stranger? Don't you remember me? You invited me here. Every moment we meet, and every moment we part. You are both stranger and friend, April Ryan. I'm sorry, but could you try to be a little less obtuse this time? I have a hard time understanding half of what you say. I will beg for your forgiveness, April Ryan. I had a hard time to make myself understood amongst other peoples. I will pull myself into this moment, difficult as it may be, so that we can communicate and so that you may understand. It is important that you understand, April Ryan, very important. Okay, time to skip forward a bit. All right. Basically, this was a long conversation. We found out a lot of things about the Venar, the ambassador's people. They don't perceive time the way we do. The way they perceive time, past, present, and future, are all the same. Basically, they perceive every moment at once. Um, because of this, they can basically see the future. The problem is they do not see a future. They see possible futures. The problem, other problem, is that right now there is a veil somewhere in the future, a veil caused by chaos. They can see a lot of lines of probability, and they can tell that all the possible futures are converging on a single point, but that this point is on the other side of the veil, and they don't know what it is. They do know that April is very much involved with this, however. But they do know that the there is a prophecy that says someone, presumably April, will either save or destroy the balance. The problem is the prophecy doesn't say which one. So a little useless as a prophecy. Uh, she asked about the Dryat Ken the dragons. The Dryat Ken came to Earth 12,000 years ago. Two of them are in Stark and two of them are in Arcadia. The only one he knows that anyone has seen lately is the White Dragon, also known as the Mother. There is a book called The Silver Spear of Gorion, which talks about the mother and her child. Um, he also knows that there is a story about a god who fell to earth and from the sky. It apparently fell into the oceans, and he says the people who live in the deeps may know more about that. Um, he does not know anything about the disc that is needed to access the Guardian's realm. He says the Tyrian ambassador has been asking about it, but the Tyrian ambassador is um, aligned with the Vanguard. The Sentinels are the only ones who know where the disc is, and so they're unlikely to tell them anything about it. And that's pretty much it. Everything else he says we need to go talk to Vestrum Tobias about. So we're going to go talk to Vestrum Tobias. That's about it for now. I am glad I could be of assistance, April Ryan. Thanks for your hospitality, Obnaxus. Goodbye. Blessings of the balance to you, April Ryan. And may your journey have been a long and fruitful one. Okay. We can go now. And... There we go. Let's head back up into the city and let's go talk to Vestrum Tobias. Best from Tobias, if you remember, was off the marketplace, up here. Good morning, Tobias. Why, it's April, my friend from Stark. Have you come to visit us again? So it appears. I didn't exactly come here by choice this time, though. Oh? How so, if I may ask? In a weird and twisted way, it's nothing out of what's become the substitute for ordinary in my life. One second I was in my room in Newport. The next, I was in a dark alley in Mercuria. 
You must have opened a shift while you were sleeping. Good. This means you are learning to harness your magic. Yeah, I guess, except I don't think I'll be able to get back home again. And this time, my mentor, Cortez, has no idea that I'm here. Ah, but I'm sure you will find a way to channel and control your power soon. In the meantime, is there anything I can do to help? All right. Now, we can ask uh, Tobias here a lot of questions. Now, he's going to direct us to a lot of books we need to find. Uh, the only problem is we have to ask him two or three times some of these questions. So just because you ask the question once doesn't mean he's giving you the answer. If it stays in your list, you need to keep asking it until he quits giving you new information. When he starts repeating himself, you know you're done. And again, this is a long, kind of boring conversation, so I'm going to skip through it, and I'll see you in a few seconds. All right. Um, basically, Tobias just told us to find a lot of books. Um, we ask him about the disc, and he says, yes, the old disc was probably shattered when the Guardian left the tower. And if the new Guardian takes the other disc back to the tower, then it will probably restore the balance. Um, the disc used to be kept on display, but it was, after a theft attempt, it was taken down. And it was split into four pieces, and each piece was given to one of the four magical races of Stark. Not, excuse me, the four magical races of Arcadia. Stark is the non-magical world, of course. Um, he doesn't know who has it or where it is, but he says it will be in the 13 scriptures, which he can find in the Sentinel Art Enclave outside of town. There's a library there that has all the different books in it. So she needs to go there and find the scriptures of the balance. She asks about, um, you know, finding the entrance to the Guardian's realm, and he says that the entrance will be wherever the split that divided the world was. But this was on Old Earth before the split into Stark and Arcadia. So it could be anywhere. It could be in the sky. It could be under the oceans. It could be underground somewhere. He says she will need to look through the histories of both worlds to see if she can find that location. It will be there somewhere. She then asks about the dragons and where she, or the Dryak Kin. He corrects her when she says dragons. And tells she says she needs to find the two of them that are in this world. He says they will be in a book called The Secrets of the Dryak Kin, which again is in the library at the Sentinel Enclave. So we've got pretty much all the information we can out of Tobias. So we're going to head on our way. Thank you, Tobias. Good to know I could help you, April. All right, let's head on back. And we know one other person here in Stark, or here in Arcadia, I keep using the wrong name, who might be able to help us. So let's go talk to the Rolling Man. Or better known as Brian Westhouse. As we make our way across the marketplace. So we're going to talk to Brian Westhouse. Hi there, Mr. Westhouse. I'm back. My word. <laughs> what on earth possessed you to return to this godforsaken place? You were lucky to escape the first time, but now you're really pushing it. It's not that bad a place, or else you wouldn't stay here. Besides, this time I didn't exactly come here by choice. I stay here because I'm a true masochist, Miss Ryan. And who forced you to come? Was it Cortez? He doesn't even know I'm here, unfortunately. No, I think I had some kind of accident with my so-called powers. I shifted in my underwear. No, ha! Huh? <laughs> Isn't that the way it is, though? We always cross the rift at the most inopportune times. <laughs> Care for a drink? Oh, no, no, that's right. You, uh, don't. 
Okay, once again, we're going to skip through the big part of the conversation. I'll see you in a few. Alright, the main things we got out of um, West House is... He says there is a race of winged beings who do nothing but observe and record history. And he thinks that if she... You know, they should be able to tell her something, or he, she should be able to find something from them. Other than that, he didn't have much to say except for the fact that he really misses bullfighting. And um, was really unhappy when Abel told him that bullfighting was outlawed centuries ago. But that's pretty much it. We didn't get a whole lot out of him other than that. So we're going to continue on. I can't think of any more questions for now. Then let's talk about other things, shall we? And... Thanks, Mr. Westhouse. Anytime, April. Come back if you're homesick and you feel like talking to a fellow alien. Anyway, that's about all we needed. We had to come to him to find out about the flying people. So now we're going to head back to the Enclave, which is way over here. It's a stone dragon gazing down into the center of the dome like it's guarding the entrance. It's a magnificent piece of work. You're the artist, not the sculptor, April. But, okay, we'll let you know about sculpture. And one thing I will point out here that will become important is there is this pattern on the ground which has these hollows. It's a small recess about the size of my fist with a thin duct extending from the recess to the circular hollow in the middle of the floor. There are three others just like it, arranged with equal distance to each other in a circle and all connected via a duct to the center of the floor. Okay. That bothers me because so much of the conversation and so much of everything in this game just feels so natural, like people are really there. That is very obviously an adventure game description if there ever was one. Infocom would have written that in 1980, or whenever they were working. It's a circular hollow about 20 centimeters across and about 5 centimeters deep. I'll also point out that we know that the disc was split into four pieces and will need to be rejoined. One, two, three, four, and rejoined. Is this not obvious what we need to do here? Okay, fine. Um, also, if you notice, this pattern around this looks an awful lot like the pattern on the carpet in Abel's room, but we'll ignore that. And here we are in the library talking to Mistrum Yemen, or I think his name is. Oh. oh, goodness me, I didn't hear you come in. Uh, by the way, you haven't seen volume six of the complete annotated history of the Northlands, have you? I, I could have sworn it was here yesterday. Sorry, no. I guess someone else must have taken it. I try to tell them to write down what they borrow on the list, but they never listen. Only last week I spent three hours searching the entire enclave for the second scripture of the ballads, the scripture of song, before I realized that Vestrum Tobias was studying it back in the city. Now, such incidents could be avoided if only, and uh, this applies to you too, young lady, People would sign out the books they borrow when they borrow them, and sign them back in when they're done. Such a simple procedure. It shouldn't take more than a few seconds to jot down your name and the name of the book you borrow. It makes my job so much easier. Uh, now, which book did you want me to find for you? Mr. Mier, that's the name I couldn't remember. Um, this is going to be another long sequence, because what we have to do is all the different books that were mentioned to us by Best from Tobias and by Brian Westhouse, um, we have to ask him for the book. And what he is going to do is he's going to slowly walk across the screen, pull a book off the shelf, carry it to that little table you see in the background right here. Um, well, I'll show you one of them. Are you Minstrom Yaren? Yes, of course. What a silly question. How would I know? I don't know you. 
I am Minstrom Yerin, keeper of the great library of Mercuria. In fact, this is the greatest library of all the Northlands. Perhaps of the entire world. Although they say the Dark People have a library as big, if not bigger, than this one. But of course, we're not allowed anywhere near there. Have you been there? I don't think... What a silly question. Of course you haven't. You're not of the Dark People, are you? You don't look like any Dark People I've ever seen, so I can't see how you could possibly... Now, where did Volume 6 disappear to, hmm? Yeah, there's a lot of that with this conversation here. Tobias said I should talk with you. Tobias? Uh, Vestrum Tobias? I haven't seen him for... Well, he was in last week, but before that it must have been... Uh, days, at least. How is he? Is still eating enough for two mules? I must tell you of this funny story I heard the other day, of how Vestrum Tobias eats enough for a table full of Minstrum. Uh, or was it one Elguan? Although the Elguan don't, as a rule, eat very much at all. Did you know that the Elguan can smell water more than half a day's journey away? Amazing, amazing creatures, perfectly suited for a life in the desert. Balance provides, uh, that's for certain. The balance provides. All right, like I said, I'm going to try to skip through this. I was hoping to show you how slow he was at getting a book, but um, we have to get through all the other Tobias stuff. recommended that I look at some books. Uh, books is what we do best here at the Enclave, that is for certain. Which book would you like to see? All right, I want to go through one of these manually, and then I'll just skip all the others and tell you what we read. I'm looking for a story called The Silver Spear of Gorimon. Yes, a fanciful tale if I ever saw one, but a charming one. Did you know that I'm often paid visit by adventurers wishing to read everything available on the spear so that they too could set out on their foolish quests? Yeah, don't you just hate those adventurers? Well, they pay for my bread, milk, and butter with their contributions to the coffers, so I shouldn't be too critical of them. Uh, but they care not about the books. They care only about what the books can give them. I care. About the books, really? I can tell. So, the Silver Spear of Gurimon, then? Yeah, this happens every time you select a book. And, yeah, don't you just wonder about those adventurers, and probably those adventure gamers, too. I mean, who can trust them? Um, and April doesn't have a Kindle. She doesn't have an e-reader. It's kind of weird, living in the 23rd century. I guess books made a big comeback at some point. Oh, well. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Okay, let's look at the book. Look, look, it's in a book. Alright, and yes, you have to read the books. So, basically, the Silver Spear of Goriman, he basically says that this, somebody named the Peric, had grown rich and bored because he had all the treasures of the world, but he wanted the unborn daughter of the White Dragon to be his... He wanted the hand of the daughter in marriage, and the white dragon refused, and basically said, you're an idiot. Well, he goes to his sorcerer, and the sorcerer comes up with a spear that will be able to defeat the dragon. So, it involves, you know, he takes the blood from a bunch of people, demands that the white dragon give him the daughter. He attacks the white dragon and stabs her with the spear, but it doesn't kill. However, where the um, blood of the white dragon landed, it turned the land arid and basically turned into a desert. 
and he went and got the egg of the white dragon back. And um, they say that there is out in the desert somewhere, there's the ruins of the capital where the Herrick still has the Spear of Gorion. And of course the White Dragon got her daughter back, or the Egg of her daughter. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. And I will point out that we have met a White Dragon who had an egg. Remember? We helped the tree with it. And for some reason the White Dragon referred to April as her daughter. I'm sure that was just a um, metaphor or figure of speech there. All right, I'm not going to make you sit here and listen to every one of these conversations or read through all these books. So I'm just going to go through them and tell you what we find. So I'll see you in a bit. And all right, um, I spent a lot of time reading books, so you won't have to. Um, the two main things that came out of the various books, there's books about the Dryad Kin, we read some folk tales and some history all about Mercuria. A lot of it's world building, a lot of it's interesting, but I'm going to skip over it for right now. The primary things we need to find is that the winged beings are from the island of Elias. So we have to find a way to get to the island of Elias, which lies in the southern seas. We also found out where the four pieces of the disc are. The four people it was divided among, the first piece went to the gentle souls who sing in the dark and shape the earth with their toes. The second piece went to the watchers in the woods. The third piece went to the two that make one of air and sea. And the last ones went to the keepers of the dark flame. These are all we know about them, but all four of these people know that someday someone whose righteousness cannot be denied will be obvious, will come to them, and they will give their piece of the disc to that person. Uh, I'll give you three guesses as to who that person is, and the second two won't count, because, yeah, have fun, April. All right, we're done in here right now, so we're going to take one last look around. I'll see you later. Yes, yes, good, good. And this guy is annoying to deal with. It's kind of weird. There's this pool of water down here. It's a pool of seawater. You'd think that it'd be a bad idea to have a pool inside a library on account of the moisture. But I guess magic makes everything possible. And there's also this little wheel in the wall here. And if I click on that, April has to go down to look at it. It's a rusty wheel. Yeah, you had to go all the way down there to tell us that, April. Okay, we're going to leave. Because we've really done everything we absolutely need to do here. Let's pick it up, April. And we've done all the investigating stuff we really need to do for right now. So... I'm going to kind of call a halt to what we've been doing here for the time being. Uh, when we come back, we're going to go into town. We're going to do some poking around, see what we have to do to get down to the island of Elias, because that seems to be where we're going to have to go next. And we'll actually start doing some interesting things as opposed to just sitting around and talking to people and reading books. So until next time, this is Dennis, Tan's Tablet of Paleo Gamer, and I will see you then.